That's excellent. Best part of the show is right there. So yep. shout out to our marketing department for that. We're done. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Thanks everyone, thanks everyone for jumping on another uh, Wednesday episode of Open Shutters. It's the last Wednesday of January, right? Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, it is. Wow. So okay. wow. So January flew by, and uh, yeah, if you're uh, if you're watching us, uh, we're going to be ta talking about how to get out of a photography slump, Pat. Not in a slump. So oh, hello. Put it that way. Um. Yeah, we're going to talk about how to get out of the photography slump. I know that we did a show like at the start of the year about like winter photography, and it's going to touch upon that. But I think we can we can kind of expand on that, just because um, you know slumps happen during the course of the year, not just winter. I know for me, over the past like this past summer, I got into a slump because everything was too nice, and it's like okay, everything's too green. So I think I think slumps happen during the year. We can kind of kind of gets you going during uh, during the whole year. So uh, hopefully you take away a couple of things. And uh, if this is your first time watching us and you don't know who we are, uh, we're all based in the Toronto area. We all have YouTube channels and we do different things. Uh, currently you're on my channel and uh, there's photography on my channel along with like vlogs and documentaries and a whole bunch of stuff. So if you don't know what my channel is about, uh, go check it out because it's a lot of fun. And uh, I'll give it over to Mr. McGowan for a little who are you and what do you do? What's up? What's up, people? Um, yeah, we all go through these slumps from time to time, and uh, it's just part of the creative process. But it's fun to talk about ways to uh, to try and get out of it, different strategies we've used ourselves and have seen other people use. Um, yeah. Just a little bit about me. I do a ghost hunting YouTube channel on top of being a very active photographer, but on YouTube, I just do ghost hunting, and it's fun. And uh, Paul... Paul mm -hmm. was in a recent mm -hmm. video, and uh, yeah, we got some awesome stuff. Oh, was good. We got it. We got it. We got to do the night, the night version. We have to do the night one, but I don't want to freeze. There'll be a night version so, coming. Be there will be a night version of the Oakville Museum when it's a little warmer outside. Anyway, over to yeah, uh, Mr. True. Evans, so he can tell you about his stuff, and then we'll get right into this. Yes. Hey, Rondo. What's up, everyone? How are the meds, Rondo? Yep. Hey, my name is Evans, uh, based in Brampton as well. Um, I'm a weddings and events photographer, videographer primarily, but I shoot everything else for fun. Um, you know, getting into a slump and trying to get yourself out can be a challenging um, thing to do sometimes, uh, especially sometimes when you get really deep into it. Um, it may take a lot just to get you out, right? So hopefully it's going to be a good show tonight. We're going to share with you guys some of the tips and tricks that we use to get ourselves out sometimes. Um, maybe that can benefit you as well. So it's going to be a fun time. On my channel, on YouTube, I do mostly video stuff, uh, gear reviews and stuff like that. Um, I've got a couple of videos out on the new Sony a7 IV, so you can head over there and check it out after the show. All right. Thanks, everyone. Excellent, excellent. And um... Yeah, I mean, you know, for the people, I mean, there's some people here in the Toronto area, like Kim and Trish and Rondell, and uh, we haven't been able to do meetups uh, over the last little while just because of, like, restrictions, but that's changing. So uh, uh, the good news with that is that we'll be able to do meetups starting the first week of February, which which I think helps a lot, uh, just to be able to, like, talk to people and meet people and just see what, what people are doing. I think that helps a great deal in terms of getting motivated because, you know, when it's minus 20 out, uh, typically you may be inclined to stay home. But once you know that someone's there, you're more motivated to like leave the house. It's just like a, it's just like a simple thing, but I think it's a big thing um, mm -hmm. that gets kind of people just like out with the camera. I always say like the hardest part is leaving the house. Like it doesn't matter like where you're going to shoot, but I think the hardest part is always leaving the house because it's so easy just to stay home. So, um, so the good news with that is meetup starting February uh, the first week of February. So pretty excited to actually see people again which is you know like tony here because you know we need bangers tony. these days tony needs tony well tony's not a slump he's posting bangers lately anyway there you go i have i have <laughs> i have the sound clip somewhere here i gotta find it i should have been ready more with that um, yeah yeah exactly Rondo. it's only minus 20 it's balmy <laughs> it's a balmy minus 20. i haven't even pulled out a winter coat yet this year Oh that, wow! That's a good one. Oh wow! <laughs> Most I've worn is a hoodie yet. 
Yeah. I, we, oh, man, really? You know, on Sunday, yeah. it was really cold. Everybody's wearing a jacket, and Brent comes in yeah. with a hood. You know? <laughs> Put it in a T-shirt. Put it in a T-shirt. That's good. Yep. <laughs> Kim saying photography is good, but it needs a kick. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's always half the battle. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I know that we got the snowstorm like last week, which is great for photography because, they, you know, you're kind of excited about the new snowfall in a way. Um, but prior to that, it wasn't like there wasn't really much happening in terms of snowfall. Everything was kind of like cold and gray. And like, it's like, what, like, what, like, what am I going to do? Right. And I think, honestly, like I'll show you my 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 number one trick besides like smashing your camera against the wall <laughs> is um, <laughs> just seeing the Instagram story or whatever. And you know what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, it was great. So like my trick is to actually not pick up the camera. Like I actually, like if, I, if I'm really, really struggling, I will go out for a walk and not even take the camera with me and just like walk and just like pay it and just walk and just see what's around you. Right. Because, you know, when you're in a slump, you put more pressure on yourself to produce, right. It's kind of like a sports analogy. When you're in a slump in baseball, you're putting more pressure on yourself to like hit the ball. Right. So you need to take that pressure off and don't even take the camera with you and just start walking you know, find, find a nice neighborhood, find like a nice trail, find like a, a good place to hike and just, just walk and just pay attention to like what's around you because your mind or your eye will like, I think ought like look for things. Right. And then you'll think, Oh, that, that would have been cool to shoot. That would have been cool to shoot. It's like, Oh, I wish I brought my camera with me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's a, it's like a, it's like a psychological thing when you're not putting the pressure to like take a photo. It's like, that's when the photos come. Right. To me, anyway, I don't know. It's like whenever I don't have a camera, it's like ah, should have should have brought my camera with me. That's because you're looking for it, right? You're like you don't like you're look you're like like you're not looking for it, but your eye is like oh, I kind of see that frame a little bit, right, Roy? I'm not. You got this thing with you. You can see on on the chat there. You can always just grab a shot with your phone too. Just yeah, take, like take yeah, complication yeah, exactly. out of the process. Just grab some snapshots. Yeah. 100%. Take the complication 100%. out of the process. and Yeah, I think... Um, really simplify it. it. goes a long way, too. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. I mean, when you're struggling, you're trying to, like, produce something, like, don't put so much pressure on yourself, right? Just, like, go yeah. outside and take a walk. And you'll be, and you'll be surprised at what, what, what a good 20-minute walk does. First of all, you get fresh air and exercise. That's number one. And the second of all you're going to come home with maybe like a couple of ideas to go out, you know, the next day and actually take the photo. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of what I do. Like right off the bat is just like put the camera away, even though I say, Oh, just take the camera with you all the time. It's like, well, so some, sometimes you like need a break too. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think for, for me, um, what one thing is I've, I, what I've realized is that I know that every winter I go into this kind of slump. So yeah. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to work it out, right? Figure out something to do in winter that I can actually enjoy doing and not feel, um, you know, like, what am I doing, right? Not not going through that slump. And the good thing is, one thing is, like, now I'm trying to learn a lot more on relying on my phone. Uh, so as we're talking about the phone, it's, it's something that you always have with you. Right. So like Paul said, go out for a walk. You go out for the walk, you leave your cameras at home, but you still have your phone in your hands. Right. And yeah, so you can it. challenge yourself when you come across some scenes to see, I don't have my camera. I just have a phone. How can I use a phone to capture this scene in a similar way in which I would use my DSLR, or my mirrorless camera? And yeah. I think challenging yourself that way and seeing that different perspective between the phone and the regular uh, mirrorless or DSL camera can motivate you to start shooting um, and shooting it maybe a little bit of a different way than you normally would shoot. Right. 100%. Um, yeah, for me, 100%. the other thing is that I use winter to practice, right? When I'm not out shooting, I use it as a practice session. Um, what do I practice? Everything. I I practice my flashlight in, I, pra I practice um, shutter speed, ISO, you know, aperture, play around with them. Um, yeah. Even if you don't have a subject, I, I do a lot of product photography. I do a lot of stuff in the house, right? Um, I tried like a couple of days ago, I was playing with water, freezing water, 
right? So I have my my one of my kids just pouring water into a cup, and I'm trying to take a photo with the water frozen. It's it's all practice. Mm. That practice, that for example, was practicing your shutter speed. What shutter speed will freeze water? What shutter speed will allow in some motion blur into the water flowing? Um, I take the time to practice all of that stuff when I'm down. I like it. I like it. That's. I mean, I think mm -hmm. Evans makes a great point. Um, you know, talking about aperture and, sh and shutter speed and, and ISO, these are all like basics of photography, but it's always good just to have a refresher on that kind of stuff. Cause I think it's so easy to forget the basics and it's always good just to, just to keep practice, like just, you know, make sure that, you know, you're fully, like you're fully good to go on, you know, shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And, uh, Evans makes a great point because there's no harm in re refreshing the basics, right? Cause we always, we always, we always need that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it definitely comes in handy. Just even if you if you want to learn off camera flash, yeah, good time to do is now. Especially yeah. if you have a cheap flash, manual controls, yeah. figure out how to use it, yeah. move it around a subject, whether that's a mannequin head or a potted plant that you happen to have. Yeah, all of it can work, and just learn what the light is going to look like in different places, how it's going to fall on your subject, fall off yeah. your subject. Yep. Just practice it. If you need a subject, get a mannequin head. Um, what I did or what I, I do from time to time, I walk into a beauty supply store and I ask, you know, because mm. most beauty supply stores, they refresh their mannequin heads from time to time. Uh, so I ask if they have some to give or even some to sell. And I've gotten right. nice, beautiful looking mannequin heads that I pay maybe five bucks for, right? Good investment. From the beauty stores. Um, the good the thing is that when you're getting a mannequin head, don't look, don't go get the white styrofoam ones. No, because it won't help you. Look for mm -hmm. one that has the skin color of a, of a nat natural looking human skin. So nude kind of skin uh, type. Mm -hmm. Those will be more of a better practice because they have kind of looking human human skin looking kind of tone, right? That you can play around with better than the styrofoam ones because those styrofoam ones, especially those that are white, um, they bounce and reflect light in a totally different way than a human skin yeah. would. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Details, 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 details like that. Five bucks, eh? <laughs> Five bucks. Yeah. Just I just walk in there and I ask, do you have a uh, extra mannequin heads that do you, you want to give away or do you, you want to sell? And, do you qualify I, that with I'm a photographer or you just say do you have a mannequin head? Oh, um <laughs> I, I, well, so it depends on who you're talking to, right? In order for people not to look at you weird, I explain myself. Yeah, I'm a photographer. I'm a photographer. on mannequin yeah. heads. Qualify uh, it. Yeah. Do you have something that I can buy or I can use, right? And most yeah. of the time, if you talk to the right person, they'll go in the back and they will get you something. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that person may watch like the third season of Dexter, right? So they don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony makes a great point. Um, I'll, put, I'll put his point back up, but he makes a great point with uh, trying to recreate a theme based on movies. So Winter Weather makes me think of the movie The Thing. I want to try and recreate the movie poster. So, I mean, really think of themes right like what are your favorite movies like what are you know obviously who like who are your favorite photographers like you know are there are there certain product shots that you like even if you go on instagram right and you just use a hashtag whatever hashtag mannequin head i'm sure you'll find a million stuff like that and you can try to see if you can somehow re re recreate that shot and i think uh i think it's just great great way to stay focused if you're just trying to create like one thing instead of like your mind kind of being scattered, it's like, oh my God, I haven't posted a photo on Instagram for like four weeks. What am I going to do? I think it really helps being focused. And it can be really simple. Like, you know, you, I, I've shown the photo a million times on the show, but just using fruit in your kitchen and using mm -hmm. depth of field just to create a cool effect, right? Using natural light against fruit. It could be really, it like, could be like a favorite uh, item in your house. Maybe it's a favorite toy or maybe it's a favorite. I don't know, clothing or something. Maybe it's like a favorite photograph that you've had for a long time. And maybe it means a lot to you. Maybe you want to photograph that. Right. So think of think of things that kind of mean something to you, that have like a history to you. And you can kind of you can kind of um have a theme around that. And I think um also it's a little bit more fulfilling because it because that item means something to you too, right? Yeah. 
one one thing that I like to do as well when I'm in a slump, um, basically workshops, meetups. Yeah. Now, I can stress the importance of these things as much as I do, right? Um, yes, sometimes I have to pay to get some of this stuff. Uh, but for me, at that point in time, spending $100 or even $50 to go to a workshop, uh, for me, is worth it in certain ways, right? Not that some of us are at a point where we don't need these workshops or anything of that sort. But there is there is something unique about meeting other creatives, right, and creating in a group. Uh, mm -hmm. When we go out for the meetups and we walk around and stuff like that, um, just that being able to talk to another photographer, right, right yeah. next to you, that alone can motivate you as well. So, oh, yeah. um, yes, meetups um, and even paid meetups, right, um, are a great way to get motivated and, and get out of some of these situations. It's, it's very crucial. Um, last Sunday I was at one, um, and, and yes, for the most part, I was just practicing <laughs> and playing with my new camera. But at the end of the day, it, it was very beneficial. Like the, what, what Paul is just showing there. You, you get creative ideas. You get to shoot yeah. different people, well, the different well, the people, see what people are doing. Um, there's nothing more encouraging than that, especially if you're struggling to go out and shoot. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah nice, nice, nice. Beautiful shot. Yeah, cool. I really dig that that checker floor there. Yeah, I was at, actually at the same thing that Evans was yeah. at. Yeah. And uh, I think Kim was too, right? Yeah, Kim was there as well. It was a great event. A lot of fun. Yeah. Met some great people to uh, to collab with in the future, but just got to to play around, help other people, yeah. bring out some snow zombies. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming, man. And, and and for the first time, Brian was actually carrying more equipment than me, which is which is what. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was actually I was asked to bring a lot of gear to help Laura out. So right, otherwise I wouldn't normally have that much stuff. But yeah, I had flashes. I'm and usually the one that carries all the flashes. The flashes. But for last Sunday, I went very simple, very light. I just had my backpack with my lenses and stuff. And I had one small um, one small light stand and, and, a, and a speed light. Okay. Um, sometimes just for me, sometimes, right, just narrowing myself to that helps me out sometimes, right? I'm used to shooting with all the flashlights, the big Godox lights and stuff. Um, mm -hmm times as well i want to challenge myself and and brian will tell you i went out that day my purpose i was vlogging with my phone right and, oh, and really nice. you know me i never vlog or do anything with my phone my phone, is just nice. my phone but sunday i was challenging myself i wanted to actually do something vlog with my phone not do what i regularly do because yeah when i'm doing the stuff that i, I do on a regular basis it's it's like I'm doing the same thing, so I don't have that motivation to push through to do anything, right? Right, right. right. But when you're doing something different, uh, for example, in the summer times when we had the zombie shoots and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's not something I regularly shoot. Um, when we went out with Brian, we went to Steve's house to shoot, um, you know, the the zombie stuff. That's not something that I regularly shoot, but it's fun to get out of your comfort zone. And that kind of, you know, learn something new, do something different from what you regularly do. And that can push you yeah. into, into the, the mood to start creating something, right? Yeah. It brings ideas into your heads on, oh, oh I can wait. do this this way. And, and, and it helps. So get Those out of here. my shots, Roy, by the way. Yeah. Also with Brian's shots that he just showed, uh, there was one where he was shooting from up high. Like, it's just, it's such a simple thing, but like, don't always shoot eye level, right? It doesn't have to be a model shoot. It can be something, something. Yeah, change your, change, change your like, elevation. Change your elevation. Change your perspective. Like, go low, go high. Like, don't always shoot to eye level because, you know, sometimes that gets boring, right? So, Here, I can. Um, yeah, if you want to show that again real quick. Yeah. yeah, I can show. So, I'll show the, the down one again. Let me just yeah. bring it up here. And then in the same outfit, I shot up. So, there's the down. Right. Yeah. And then which way is it here? Uh, you know what? Let me do it this way. And then I was shooting up. 
for this one. Yeah. Different lighting setup, different posing, different positions, yeah. same outfit, exact yes. same space. Like she's only three feet from where she was before. Right. Because that's the couch that her legs are on. Right, right. In right. the previous photo. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I think it's, I think things is just such a simple technique. And, you know, you don't need it, you know, say, for example, you don't have a model to work with, you know, maybe, you, maybe you have a dog or a cat to work with and just use, if you have a pet, you, you can use your pet, right? If you're, if you live with someone, maybe they're, maybe they'd be willing to help you out. If not, you can, you could use a mannequin head. So it's not it's really stuff. about, yeah, go ahead, Brian. You can use say? stuffed animals too. Like, yeah, like it's not even, animal, anything. yeah, yeah, I mean. You know, like the focus here is slump. So really with slumps is like, don't worry about like the result, just like focus on the process, right? Because once you go yeah. through the process of like shooting your pet or the stuffed animal or like a like a like like an apple, it doesn't matter because you've already practiced the steps, right? So once you're actually at a studio shooting a model, you've already gone through the process. You've already gone, gone through that checklist of, I know what to do now, right? Because I've gone through that framework of thought. So um and i think don't, that, worry, don't don't worry about the result and i think that I mean, that mentality of always looking for a model sometimes we need to get out of it you don't always yeah. need a model to shoot right you can shoot anything um but even if you're stuck and you still want to shoot portraits you have people in your house right um really? i've used my kids i've used my wife <laughs> i've used my wife's friends sometimes right uh we may be in a lockdown you can go out but you still have people close family members that you can use for practice even if you're not gonna post them even if they don't like you to post them right you yeah. can still use them for your practice because the, at the end of the day it's it's, it's not film right it's digital you can delete <laughs> the sorry, sorry. All you want, right? yeah. roy has left the chat there are many. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Roy, Roy understands that if you're shooting film, then yeah. you're thinking about every frame and no, make you use it wisely, right? But yeah. in the digital world, you can fire up <laughs> as many as you want and then delete them, those that you don't want. Yeah. Um, so don't look at just the studio piece, but also look at the fact that you can do anything at home. Um, I've got a lot of shots, maybe I, I, I can find some that I shot right in my living room. Right, mm. I convert my living room into my studio space, um, have my wife model for me, and set up my lights and I shoot. So you don't need um, that studio space. But at the same time, there are times where um, if I'm shooting with someone that I'm not comfortable bringing home, um, just like I said with the meetups, I it's good to do the meetups, or sometimes I will spend that money, rent a studio space, have a model ready to shoot, and shoot there too. Right. Do something out of the ordinary, like I said, re your regular process. It doesn't have to be um, go out looking for a portfolio shot. That's what I always tell people that if I go to a, a meetup or I go to a workshop, yeah. I'm not there looking to shoot portfolio shots. Right. I'm just there trying to have fun, enjoy creating with other people. If I get bangers, as Tony calls them, then yes, mm -hmm. fine, I get the bangers. But my goal is not there to shoot for bangers, but to enjoy the process, learn and see how other people are working, um, and maybe take one or two tips from people that I can incorporate into my own workflow. So, makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, there's another branch of photography. <laughs> yeah, Studio 407, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't, I mean, you don't, you know, if you don't have a model, you can always just get really cr cr creative around the house and just use whatever you can use just to kind of get like your thought process and like in terms of shooting. So pick up a uh, bunch a of great, flowers. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, you can, get, you can get really simple, right? Yep. Like really simple. Yeah, it doesn't have to be um, complicated. Okay, so this yeah, last kind of, thing we want to share. Uh, you got to be very careful with this one <laughs> because it can get you in trouble. Uh, uh -oh. not trouble as in trouble with anything, but trouble with your pocket. <laughs> right? Oh, okay. uh, sometimes try out something new, a new mm -hmm. gear, um, a new accessory, um, a new prop, something like that, right? Can also yeah. get you going. But like I said, you got to be careful with this one because you don't want to end up getting to that cycle of, I always need the greatest and best to create. 
because then you're not yeah. really committing, you're just wasting money, right? Uh, yeah, that's you gotta get into that habit of maybe even if it's a five dollar thing, like we had the dollar store challenge a while back, right? Mm -hmm. You can spend five dollars, and that five dollars could motivate you to create something you need, right? Uh, that will get you back on your feet and going. I'm not saying go out and buy a new camera, go buy, go out and buy a new that or that. You don't need all of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but buying something very, very small here or there, um, why spending, like I, I put it, may get you on the groove again. It may be five bucks, but five bucks well spent can get you um, something very unique and yeah. interesting and something that will make you want to shoot more and more. Dollar store is a great way to get out of a slum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There are so way. many, so many opportunities. Dollar store, it's great. Walk around the dollar store, put a budget on yourself, and try and figure something out, and you will come out of there with hundreds of ideas. Yeah. Also, if you have a theme prior to, you can go go to the, to, to, you can go to the dollar store and buy things based on that theme too, right? I mean, it yeah. kind of works two ways. But uh, I'm I sure we'll... saw, I saw a video recently that was really cool, and someone actually made a lamp. That was like a ufo abduction lamp mm. so they basically took like pie plates from the dollar store and a glass from the dollar store and leds from the dollar store and suspended a nice. little cow from the dollar store so the light shining onto the glass looks like the beam below a ufo oh really that's cool i was like oh that is so great yeah so i'm actually probably going to try and put together a photo like that at some point Should. I using see, uh... the idea of the lamp but pushing it a little further yeah I see Philly Nichols says, I would love to rent a lens or two to test out. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you, if, you're in, if you're in the GTA, the only place I know in the GTA that rents out yes, and stuff is uh, Vistec. That's it. Yeah. I, know, I think Henry's does it, but they only do it at a Toronto location. Anyway. Uh, US, you've got like lensrentals.com. Yeah. If those guys are still well, which, around. Well, which lens do you want to rent? Do you want to let us know? We can ask our sponsor. No, I'm just joking. So, and, and, and this is one of the, the, the advantages of workshops and, and meetups as well, because sometimes at these meetups, if you have a lens that you are interested in, who knows, you may run into somebody who has that lens and you can play around with it while at a meetup too. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's again, the benefit of meetups is you can pass around gear with other people. I don't know how many times I've lent lenses to people uh, usually it's the Canon that. 50 mil, and usually they end up going to buy one after borrowing. It. Yeah, you should get some sort of you should, you should get some sort of commission off that. I know, right? Canon sponsor me. It'd be nice, right? I've sold a lot of 50 mils by letting people use mine. Yep. Where's that? Where, where is that? Where's that affiliate link? You should I just know, put right? an affiliate link in your bio and just say buy here. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Uh, he's probably saying maybe the 1835 Sigma. The 18 to 35 Sigma is a great mine. lens. Awesome lens. I just sold mine because I, I got rid of my um, Blackmagic 6K Pro and I sold it with it too. Mm. I used to use it with the 7D Mark II all the time. Yeah. So awesome, awesome lens. That's great the lens. only lens I was using on my Blackmagic. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, you can buy it through the affiliate link somewhere. Yeah. High praise for the 18 to 35. Yeah, exactly right. Um, let me show you guys a few examples. Um, of, uh, the other thing, though, is he said he's using the 5D Mark IV. Now, in 4K, though. 35 is, um, well, it's an APS-C lens, so you're going to get a crop, right? Yeah, well, the 5D4 mm -hmm. is a full frame, but in 4K, I believe it's still cropped. So. It's crap. Oh, well, then yeah. you don't lose anything there. So he'll be okay. Let us know. Let us know if you get it. You can come on the show and talk about the experience if you want. <laughs> Yay or nay? Um, I think I found a few examples of, of what I did during the first lockdown. Way in the archive. Just like using like your breakfast, right? You guys have the photo? Uh, yep, cereal. Yeah, yeah cereal. just cereal, like shooting from above, right? Like kind of like what we were talking about, just shooting from above, right? Um, what do we got? Like just use crackers, whatever, right? Again, not not about the result, it's about the process of just trying to 
um, see a frame, right? Yep. Just right. very simple, very simple. It's not labor intensive, right? But I mean, these are things that are around you at all times. Yeah, the first yeah. lockdown in 2020, I actually just went for walks with my camera and brought toys. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Like and I think all, all, you, just, you just made a great point um, that I think most people sometimes, actually sometimes that's what gets us into the slump because sometimes we're actually thinking about creating that perfect shot that when we don't get that perfect shot we think we're looking for, uh, we feel kind of, frustrated and and don't want to chew it right uh but sometimes it's not about the the shot it's about the process right yeah, it's about always. um your practice because practice makes you get to the point where you're progressing um yeah. without practice there's no way to see the improvements in which your your, your shooting skills are, are developing so yeah. don't don't focus so much on the results uh, think more about the process, right? Oh. And based on the results that you're getting, if you don't like it, what do I change? What do I modify to get a better result the next time I shoot it? Yeah. With my phone, right? Just using like the chain link fence to frame this person walking their dog, whatever, right? You're just you're just mm -hmm. thinking about the shot. So just stuff like this it's around you all the time. Yeah. It doesn't um, have to be a banger all no. the time. It's not a banger, right? Just like whatever, you're using the path. All right, cool. Might be cool black and white, but um, at least at least you're taking a shot, right? Um, and there's so much like there's so much in the house once you actually start to think about it. Um, there really is like once you actually get your mind around it. Um, keep them coming, guys, with like how you guys get out of a slump. If you're in a slump, we'd love to hear um, how you guys are doing so far in 2022 with regards to photography because, uh, you know, it's not always about us. No, no. Taking there you go. Out. See? There you go. Stuff like this. <laughs> Just stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. are you buried in this? Yeah, exactly. Just little Funkos. Yeah. Got lots yeah, of little Funkos. Cool. Cool. I dig that. Yeah. That's Again, actually. Low, right? That I, well, that's actually a composite. Mm. I took a photo from my archives and right, right, changed right, right. it up and added this character in. And Love it. Getting creative, right? Yeah, just playing. And you got to remember sometimes why you picked up a camera in the first place it was probably for fun. So just yeah. go have fun. Oh, exactly. 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 Don't that's worry about most, how many likes most... you're going to get on Instagram or whatever. Just have fun. Yeah. So this this was yeah. um, Brian's idea <laughs> at the meetup. <laughs> there you go. Put a gel. With moody lighting, though. Right, gel. Yep. Moody lighting. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's... Red gel, honeycomb grid. Honeycomb grid, yep. Yep. Super tight Lima light. Mm -hmm. Um, was just, this was actually just one light, um, yeah. you know, hitting the, the subject, same spot, one light, um, mm, nice you know, jacket. Yeah. I was playing around with these shots, um, not the best results, but as portrait shooters, we always train to use the telephoto lenses for portraits. Mm. Um, at this meetup, I shot most of the time using a timer on 17 to 28, right? Um, I was doing yeah. something out of the norm because I would normally pick up my 85 or even pick up my 70 to 180, um, uh, these kind of shoots. But I shot a lot of, of the shots on this day just using um, my wide angle zoom lens, just break the rules right um yeah old street portraits with a wide long uh, long lens nope i just play around do something unique do something i different. used two lenses of that workshop i used a 16 mil and a 30 mil prime those are the only two lenses i pulled out of my bag yeah oh yeah but it's good mood. to challenge hashtag, those two. hashtag mood 
Um, I like Rondell's point about music. Yeah, I mean, totally. I think, you know, just doing something opposite of photography also kind of gets you out of the slump, right? So oh, yeah. music, for sure. For sure, I agree with that. And also, like, just doing something totally the opposite, like, you know, whatever it is, maybe you maybe you have a side, maybe you have a second hobby or second passion, just do that. Maybe you like to do carpentry work or something, go do that for a day. So just again, like like we said at the start, it just takes the pressure off, right? So if you do something yeah. totally opposite, you know, you just your mind works better when it's find opposite. something to do for you. Tony's asking, was that a fashion workshop? Yeah, fashion forward, Tony. Yeah, fashion forward. On Instagram. You following them? If you, you follow them, be. pay attention. There's be. a black light workshop coming up. Uh so we're using 35 mil, what, on Sunday, Kim? Mm. Has anyone found the lens cap yet? Who, Kim, lost the lens cap? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that sucks. Could be worse. It happens. Someone lost pants, so. Someone lost pants, even worse. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, if you guys have like a second hobby or a second passion or a second interest or who knows, maybe you want to go learn a language, go go to that for a couple of days because you never know what could happen, right? So big believer in that, just having something else to do besides just photography or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Because sometimes, like I said, sometimes you just need a break. Like you can't be doing it all 24-7 all every day, day of the year because uh, – Pick up your we're only camera. Human. We're only human, god damn it. I say god damn it on YouTube. Pick up this thing and shoot a video. There's free editing software. Yeah, you yeah. Do a video so, I mean, on pick this up your thing. phone and shoot a. Yeah, yeah, Shoot yeah, a video. Yeah. Hundred. Yeah. Make something you want to make. What's Roy saying? Better losing a lens cap yeah. than a camera. Yes. Yeah. This is true. This is true. Um, I think I may have mentioned this in a previous show, but another just online resource that you can use is um, just like blogs. And um, there's a good one off Shutterstock that has all kinds of stuff. You guys have the screen? Yep. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. So if if you go to Shutterstock, there's a blog button and find stuff they find. And it's just a great way just to like learn about different types of photography and diff different types of photography businesses. And this is just one of like a million blogs on the internet, but um, I suggest, you know, reading a blog because uh, it's different than just looking at a photo. And sometimes you can pick up a couple of things. There's also one on Adobe, I think too, and plus a billion more out there, but I think blogs are a great way just to like read about different just different stuff versus like your own. Cause I think it's easy to get lost in your own head. Cause you're, we're so used to like doing our own thing. Like Evan said, like do something different, right? Like what is it something that you don't do? So a read about it, learn about it, do it, watch a YouTube video, whatever. But I think it just kind of like spears that imagination and curiosity just to like learn more. Or, and who knows, maybe you might dive, dive into it more, but um, there's a good blog, a good blog on Shutterstock. Recommend that one. Uh, I think just because it's I think so it Roy just mentioned it too, where you try a different type of photography. So yeah, so you're a portrait photographer mostly. Go go shoot some landscapes using your portrait lens, but go shoot some landscape. Yeah. If you're if you're a landscape photographer, pick up a telephoto and go try and shoot some birds. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's actually, it's actually a lot of fun. Yeah, Viewbug is good too. Yeah. 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 I haven't gone on Viewbug in a couple of years. <laughs> Viewbug, yeah. Um, photography, video board, and storyboards. Yes. Storyboarding can be fun. What's Evan sharing? Oh, yeah. Um, just Jeez. talking about home, right? Mm. Um, all of these right in my living room, right? Nice. So you don't need go out in a studio or a big place, get a small nice space, one. whatever you can do in the living room, get the mm -hmm. kids, anybody, um, just shoot all of these shot right in my living room. Just oh, nice one, man. 
sometimes you can pose them, <laughs> let them do their thing, and then you just are those, shoot. Are those play. like balls or balloons? They're actually balloons. Balloons, okay. Right. Um, fortunately for me, my wife is a decorator, so yeah, you got props, right? This up, she puts up her own props and adds to it. Um, yeah, yeah. Me, <laughs> so uh, I was shooting, so just started blowing balloons, and you know, nice, you ended up being nice, so cute, so cute, yeah, so cute. Yeah, <laughs> I this shoot for this little girl. Um, like I said, it's not every time that you need to go out to a studio. Uh, rent studio space. If you have the little tiny space in your place, you can use it mm -hmm. as long as you're comfortable with whoever is coming in. Um, yeah. When I first started, I used to use my part of my basement as my studio, and I used to shoot there all the time. Well, the boss took over that space, so now I don't have that space anymore. <laughs> but whenever I need to, I just convert a part of the living room, and you can shoot. Right. You nice don't need man. anything. I don't. You would never know. You would never know the difference. No. Nope. Yeah. You would never know that. Yeah, you would never. It's you know. Again, you can go to the dollar store and find a cheap backdrop and just use that too, right? I mean, um, find some good stuff um, there. For backdrops, I've used so many different things. Um, I I I I have in my garage. I have this plywood that I got mm. from um, Lowe's that I have kind of built a little bit of a base at the back so it can stand up and. What I do is from time to time, I just paint it different colors based on oh, what okay. color I want. Paint it, and you get a different color backdrop. Right? Nice, man. And, mm -hmm. and That's about cheaper. trades. <laughs> it's cheaper. You're a painter, too. Oh, like painting, is, painting is easy. I mean, anybody can paint. <laughs> <laughs> right? Everyone can cook, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. You can usually but, buy scrap fabrics at like Value Village and stuff. Value too. Village. Yeah. Um, there's this place yeah, in the country that I go to, Jack Jig Textiles. Um, mm. And I buy all sort of fabrics from there that sometimes I use for props. Um, right. Sometimes there's certain sets that I, I probably would use some of those fabrics as drapes and stuff like that and shoot with, with that just practicing um cheap for me the, the plywood thing is the cheapest backdrop you can ever get because it's reusable um mm -hmm. all i do is bring it in put it there have whatever color i want the next day if i want something different i paint it same color do i okay. um, get maybe ten ten dollar buckets of paint from Lowe's or wherever keep them so you have different mm -hmm. type colors with you all the time and you can just Paint them because each backdrops when I used to buy them, the small one um, is about sixty dollars. They're about right. Um, so having that plywood that you can paint over every time just saves you that extra sixty bucks you have to paint each time you need something different color. Nice, or just or just hire Evans <laughs> <laughs> or that a little, a little side business because you're not busy, right? Like you're not busy. You got time to paint other people's yeah, stuff. Right. <laughs> it's a great point. Um, you know, also don't be afraid of like going to the very start of your grid on Instagram and like looking at the photos that can do that better and do it better. Right. Because yeah. if you've been on Instagram for five years, chances are you've improved. Right. So I sometimes, I sometimes well, go to I the very start and look. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like just go to the very start and look at what you've done in the, in your first year and try to make those photos better. I think also kind of mm -hmm. spur, spurs that process too. And also people that you admire, if they if they kept their grid more or less the same, go to the very start and see what they what they did five years ago. You'd be shocked at what they have on their grid, right? Because it just yeah. kind of like lessens that mystery of like you know they are amazing and we're not. Like everyone started from zero, right? So just look at what people have done over five, six, seven years, and you'll see like the gradual. The worst right? thing you can do to yourself. It's look at somebody's grid and compare it to yours. Never do that. Without yeah. really going down to see where they've yeah. come from, right? You got to see that progression. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you, you're looking at their current grid. Uh, you don't know how far or how long it's taking them to develop their skill to that point. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, so that's why I always like going to the start yeah. of people's grids because I'm just curious. Yeah. Just curious. Now, maybe they delete some stuff, which is possible, but. If they're an artist, hopefully they kept oh. it. So, so uh, the the last comment there just reminded me of something that I do sometimes too. Mm. Um, when when she, he said that tripping for SLR focal lens, right? Yeah. 
um, the one before that, thrifting for SLR. for SLR focal lengths. Now that's that's, that's that's very interesting, and I like to do that a lot. Um, yeah. I like to shoot film lenses on my DSLRs, <laughs> right? Uh, so the olden time, the the vintage lenses, um, I pick those up. I go to Buster's uh, marketplace and I look for the old lenses that people are selling for cheap, right? I've I actually bought two or three lenses for like 40 bucks, 30 bucks, they're about. Um, and for me, it's a challenge because you now have, well, it's not as hard as shooting it on film because our DSLRs, especially the mirrorless cameras, will give you focus peaking and all that stuff that can help you focus manually with that. But for me, because I shoot video and sometimes I mono focus in video, I challenge myself to mono focus in photos as well sometimes using some of the vintage lenses. And the advantage is that, well, it's cheap, first off. Secondly, they have very unique characteristics to these lenses that um, you can get with the regular um, you know, DSLR lenses these days. Right? So going back and picking up one of my old lenses and just manually putting it on with a basic bare bones adapter and playing around with that, even at home with toys and house houseware stuff like that it's 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 fun it's something to do yeah. outside of your normal purview yeah and you're having fun which i think is always thing number yeah. one the number one important thing that you should be having or else what is the point of anything yeah we're always looking for a MC, um, smc pentax 200 mil okay. <laughs> that's what that's what we're always looking for there you go Wait, I think I have one of those. <laughs> there you go. Well, I gotta check. Sir, I, said, I'm gonna, I think I have I'm one. Expose of, myself one. here. Okay. This is my very first photo shoot with Laura. Okay. Yeah. An off camera flash. Yeah. Six months after I picked up a camera. Nice. Nice. There you go. Do you like it? Do you, do you like the photo? Not anymore. No. No. Yeah. But. That that was my first off-camera flash portrait shoot. Where was this taken? High Park. Okay, in the in the middle of the daytime. Yep. Nice. Middle of the day, using Shut one up, speed Laura. light. This is from 2013, so it would have been like six months after I picked up my first camera. Yep. And Solid. I think it's good, right? It, it's it's having having old pictures like this. It helps you yourself to know how far you've come as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I keep a lot. I, I have photos from <laughs> my very first photo I took from, and everything that I sometimes go through it and see. But um, it, it's always good to refer back and see where you've come from. Because sometimes when you feel like I'm not creating enough, I'm not good enough, look back and see where you've come from. And then you yeah. will know that I've come a long way, right? And I can still go further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you want to come on, jump on, man. I just gave you the link in the shared. Oh, he was at the uh, anybody else want to on the weekend too. Yep. Oh, Subban? Nice. Yeah. Wow, it's okay, cool. Um also like another way just to like get out of a funk is um start to like maybe look at framing some of like some of your favorite photos yes i know it costs money and all that but i think once you start to frame the photos that you really really love it becomes more personable and it becomes more yours and i think that feeling like that feeling that you have i think it's going to spur you just to kind of get out there and shoot something else that you want to frame so don't oh don't discount framing because uh it can be a lot of fun there's sue ben hey. jumping on for you just to kind of hey, buddy. get out there and shoot something hey. else Frames. We got an echo going on. We got an echo. Uh, Subban, can you mute your YouTube? Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Thanks. You're good. Can you hear so us? Good. Can you hear us, man? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Perfect. How's it going? Good. How was Sunday? Well, Sunday was fun. Do you, okay. you want to share any photos from Sunday? Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah, lots. Of, <laughs> yeah, lots of stuff. What I'm just studying, I can share a few. Yeah. Now, are you currently in a are you currently in a slump? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 
I was until Sunday. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't actually picked up. See, the thing is this. I can't say if I was actually in a slump or not really in a slump. But I, I know for sure I was in a photography slump. Mm. Because these days, it's like whenever I pick up my camera, photos is, was the last thing that comes to my mind. Yeah, you're doing video all the time, right? I'm actually doing video. Yeah. Um, and and not just because I don't want to shoot photos, but I just didn't feel like shooting photos because I right, didn't... Right. I don't know. It was somehow, some some way, but you know, shooting around with all these guys on Sunday kind of pushed me to the point where I want to do something. So I actually um, trying to get my wife to model for me sometime this week at home and see yeah. if I can create something. You know, do a little Love set it. at home and, and see what I can come up with. Love it. Steven, if you want to share, there's a share icon at the bottom, and then you can share your screen. Or... Well, uh, um, I, ha I have to join because I have to give access to my. Um, the streaming okay let me join back okay going back so just while Subban's doing that um yeah. one of the other things that can help with slumps is challenges yeah it's a good yes. great segue brian yeah it's a great segue so yeah. we are actually <laughs> issuing a black and white challenge for the month of february the whole month so towards the end of february we are going to do a black and white show and we want to feature your black and white photos uh, from all the community, the get out shoot community. We want black and white photos from you, but not from your archive. We want to challenge you to go yeah. out and actually take new black and white photos and send in, you know, your favorite two or three for us to feature mm -hmm. on the show and on the uh, open shutter Instagram. We'd love to mm -hmm. talk about them. We'd love to have people who shoot on the show to talk about their photos. Yes, yes, we. Yeah, will. February is perfect for black and white photos. Yeah, I know we have guests lined up for the next three weeks, so yes, it will probably be the week after the fourth week. I'd have to look at the calendar to know the exactly twenty third. The twenty third, I believe. Twenty third. Okay, I think so. That will be the black and white show. We yeah. will talk about black and white photography, and we will show black and white photos from the community from the challenge. Yeah, so we'll take some black and white photos and uh, we'll set up a Google Drive for everybody to submit to. But take new ones, don't, yeah, don't yeah. Like, old ones. It's not take a rule, but it's encouraged. <laughs> We're we gonna, have have <laughs> we gonna take your medicine, we all have a ton sitting around. So, take new black and white photos, and we'll get a link set up closer to the yeah. show date for people to submit their photos. Yeah, just black and white challenge. Yeah. Now, Brian, what are what are your some what are some of your tips that you use to take black and white? Like quick tips, pointers for people. Like, do you have any quick tips? Um, for look for contrast. Look for shadow. Experiment and play. And Kim, you can do whatever you want. Do whatever you want, Kim. But we can't accept two, just one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. We know it's you. We know, we it's, know you, Kim. it's you, Kim um so it's gonna be exciting yeah. hopefully that kind of motivates you guys to do some stuff and uh yeah get again if you guys want to come on and talk about them it's always good to get the get the message from the photographer instead of us trying to decipher the code so yeah roy if you want to shoot film and submit yeah roy yeah roy, roy, film, roy, roy, roy's all over that just take a black and white photo <laughs> or two or 12. yeah yeah okay see ben's all over it too right yeah ben will be there Depends <laughs> all over to you. Oh, um, vanished again. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's having trouble or whatnot, but um, yeah. Send me a link to add as a story. Oh, what link? I don't know what link that is. Oh, I think she's talking about the the challenge. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll we haven't. We, we have yeah, to do we'll a post about you. it. So. We'll tag you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll tag you. Yeah, hopefully that gets, hopefully that gets you guys motivated to go out there and shoot some black my and white. My little tip for black and white is yeah. underexposed badly or overexposed badly sometimes. Mm. <laughs> what why is that? Um, I I tend to like black and whites, especially when they are overexposed. Um, just okay. because, well, not overexposed to you know like where you are clipping highlights and everything is just blown out. But when it's um, a little bit, well, maybe one or two stops over the normal exposure, uh, for me, I find that when I convert those kind of shots into black and white, the contrast is there, um, the shadow and highlight ratios, um, they work better right. for me. 
for my conversion style. So. Mm. Interesting. And do you like shooting black and white outside or, or, or inside the home? Like what's your preference? Inside um, or outside? Both. I'm, I'm, I'm mm. fine with both. Um, mm. I think outside you have a lot more options. Um, indoors too, you can create your own kind of highlights and shadows. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so it, it works in both ways. Roy is throwing out a chat. Prefer 35 mil black and white or digital disgust with a smiley face. That <laughs> has been thrown. I, I only shoot digital. Sorry, Roy. <laughs> yeah, we're not like you, you. You should actually really speak with Ben here because Ben is also a film guru. So, mm -hmm. um, so Ben, I don't know. Okay, I think is this Brian showing something? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I still finding difficulty to share. <laughs> is it? Yeah. You just can't share and strange. Yeah, I don't know. Are you, are you using Firefox? <laughs> no, I'm in Chrome. Chrome? Oh. It's weird, man. I don't know. Because Firefox is uh, have emission issues. Yeah. Oh, let me try with. Sure. Um... Shout out to StreamYard. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure what's happening, but. Guys, if you guys have any other uh, tips and tricks, internet added, connections today. Yeah, yeah. Sorry if this, I don't know if this live was choppy for you guys, but had some internet connections today for some reason. So uh, try to get that rectified for next week. So yeah, anyway, like uh, Brian said, we have um, the next three weeks we have um, guests on. So we'll be announcing those as the weeks come. But lots of cool stuff, different stuff. Some people that haven't been on the show before. So uh, a lot of stuff coming down. So uh, I think we have and one again, guy if you guys, if anybody, floor, right? if anybody wants to come on one week and talk about whatever they want to talk about, uh, feel free. Because like I said, it's not always about us talking, right? So that's yeah. Right. Oh, we love having guests on. Yeah, I just love yeah. having guests on. Love having community submissions. Yeah, because that's what it's about, right? Just you know, us sharing knowledge, you guys sharing knowledge, and we just grow together and. If that's not what it's about, I don't know what is. Um, Sudan, should we wait for you or should we like do final thoughts? I'm not sure how Sudan wants to do this. Do you want to come on yeah, another week and show your stuff? Ask Noah from and I know, right? <laughs> I know, I know. I thought about that. That would be great. Yeah, I thought about that. The dude's got like 50K on YouTube, man. Yeah. I'm like, don't you know who you are? Open shutter, man. Like, what? Who? Huh? <laughs> He's got 50K. I was happy to just okay. crack 500. Yeah, like, uh, okay, sure. Ben, or though, as a, see? Ben's ready to go. Oh, uh, Ben's, Ben's probably already shooting. <laughs> In terms of aesthetics, by the way. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I might, I might ask him more. Because the worst thing that can happen is, Say worst no. thing he says no thanks yeah but they say no i can't but describe though yeah <laughs> basically um so then maybe we'll just have you on one week and we can talk about your stuff maybe we can do that if you want yeah that would be good because we are betting up against be the time might be a little so. bit more organized yeah is that okay Suban? give us a up or not but, um we're up against the hour and our sponsor is going to get upset at us again just joking. Um, so yeah, that could that could be it. If you guys don't have any uh, other things to add in terms of um, getting out of a slump, I don't know. Besides just you know smashing your camera against the wall, which so sometimes helps. Subin's back for another another round. Oh, you're geez. you're literally against the brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> you're literally against the brick wall. You're, Subin is hitting the brick wall as we it, speak. Is it showing the floating head? Yeah, yeah. That's what I hate on this background. Uh, which all... Are you able to share anything, man? That's what I'm trying. Final try. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, we got. Well, we got. Yeah, we're we're gonna add the matrix and then share your oh, screen. There we man. go. Okay. Go, go, this go. is from Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. All right. So. 
Yeah, this is everybody's favorite shot. Oh, uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, cool, man. Lord dangling. Okay. And some how long? So, like, how long was she hoping? Was she, was she hope like holding on, holding on like that? A couple seconds? Or yeah, she was up there for a while. Yeah. Like Die Hard style. Oh, I love that one. Uh, this is actually I just uh, borrowed yeah. <laughs> from Brian. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> oh my god! So that day was really my lighting was. It's all went down. Got three hundred, eighty three hundred. It was the the soft box not working. Then I switched to the normal. 860 Godox um, on the camera speed light. Um, this one actually we got some dramatic with a single light. Yeah, you're using my uh, my light with a grid. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, the small reflector with the grid. Yeah. Yeah. And I can use a retro shoot, maybe. I'm not <laughs> sure what the theme was. Ask Brian and screw them or Evans. Group shot. It's a group shot. That's a good one. Rad A. Yeah, one of the designers had red dresses for mm, every nice. model. There were a couple of designers involved in this one. Yeah, cool. Uh, I have some. This is Laura's close up. Oh, I like I use the plant as foreground. Plant's yeah. nice, yeah. That's not the Mm. Cool. Cold rack. I like I use the cold rack. Yeah. Yeah. This one is the uh, with a mirror. <laughs> Brian, you are on the frame. You see it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Back of Brian's head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a tight space. Yeah, it's a tight, yeah. tight space. Uh, the most most of my mirror shots also had people. In, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Of people, right. yeah, it was it was hard to avoid. Yeah. Saw, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, then I I just went to this 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 area right where near to the steps. That's why I took more of shots because nobody was there. Right. This one, I, yeah, this is actually I mean, a candid shot. So I, somebody was shooting and then I took it. Mm. That worked out well. Mm, cool. that came out well. And there is a coffee shot. What is that? Yeah, this one. Oh, nice yes, one. Sir. Yeah. That that, uh, that will really do well on stock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could, yeah. And this one also. Yeah. Yeah, I just keep going. I think I have a lot of photos. So I'll show one more, then I'll think. I... Yeah, it was a good event. It was a really that, good that is a really good one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it looks like fun. That that's a pretty cool in Toronto. Got it. In Toronto, yeah. right? Yeah. Stockyards. Yeah. Stockyards district. Yeah. Keel and Sinclair area. Yeah. Great little studio. Nice space. Yeah. yeah. Fashion forward on Instagram because that's where they post all their information for their meetup mm -hmm. stuff. So. Yeah. Blacklight workshop coming up later in February. Yeah, so there you have it. Thanks, Ben, for sharing. Come on, come on another yeah, time. You can share some more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that could do the show. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on another Wednesday. Hopefully, you took a wake up things and uh, yeah, give it to Brian for some final thoughts. Black and white challenge. Yeah, watch the uh, open shutter IG. Make open sure you subscribe IG. to Evans. Make sure you subscribe to me. Make sure you subscribe to Paul. We all have YouTube channels, and yep. uh, we'll okay. see you next week. That's it for me. Thanks everybody for uh, for watching. Yeah. Evan, it's over to you. Yep. Yeah. Well, check out our channels. We all do different things. Uh, my beef channel is well, it's a mix of photo and video stuff. But these days, I lean more towards the video stuff. So go check it out. I got a couple of reviews and stuff on the A74. Yeah. Uh, new Sony shooters. Go check it out. Um, yeah. And enjoy the the week. Go out, shoot something. Black and white yeah. challenge. Don't forget. All right. All right. Sivan, final thoughts? You're on here. <laughs> okay. Did you learn anything? <laughs> That's following you. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks for hopping on, Sivan. Thank you.
Cool. Uh, thanks, everyone. We'll see you uh, next Wednesday with a special guest. And uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video. And uh, we'll see you next week. Peace. And watch for the podcast. It'll be on Spotify tomorrow to relive all this magic. <laughs> <laughs> see you next week. Have a great evening. Evans, outro music. Oh, yeah. I almost got uh, 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 outro. There we go.